Sometimes we have quadratic equations that do not factor nicely with integers. And so um, this next technique is more versatile. It allows you to solve a quadratic that doesn't have nice integer solutions. And um, so, so we're going to take a look at um, solving a quadratic by completing the square. Now, if you look at this simple quadratic x squared minus 2, um, now you could try to factor that, but you'd, have, you'd be looking for factors of negative 2 that add to 0. And it doesn't, it, it doesn't work nicely with integers. So another thing we could do, we just add 2 to both sides and then take the square root of both sides, right? Um, now we have to remember when you unsquare uh, both sides, essentially, is what we're doing, um, that x value could have been positive or it could have been negative. Both of these solutions work. So the solution to this quadratic x squared minus 2 equals 0 um, is x equals positive 2 or negative 2. Now I've written two solutions in one. So this is really the same as the square root of 2 comma negative square root of 2. There's two solutions I've just written plus minus <laughs> to indicate as a shorthand of, of writing the, out these two solutions. So um, we've just done it by unsquaring the x, the x squared, I should say. And um, so let's take a look at this technique of completing the square. Now we have to remember the form of a, of a perfect square. So what we're trying to do is get a perfect square on one side and then unsquare both sides. So um, in this, uh, there's a step-by-step -step process here <laughs> that I've written out um, and, and then shown you an example here on the right. All right, so the first thing you want to do is just get it, um, you want to move the constant term on to one side and everything involving x on the other side. All right, so in this case, we started with x squared minus 6x minus 1, and all I've done is just add 1 to both sides so that we have 6, or so we have x squared minus 6x equals 1. And I've left a space. Notice I've left a bit of a space here because I'm going to use that space. Um, what I want to do is add something to both sides that make the left-hand side a perfect square. All right. So um, what I want to add to both sides is half of the middle coefficient squared. Okay. I'm going to take half of the, well, what was the middle coefficient? <laughs> I'm going to square it. All right. Now that just comes from the fact that if I have, um, if I have a perfect square, let's say x plus a, if I square that out, I get, you could FOIL it out, or you, if you know the standard form, you end up with x squared plus 2ax plus um, a squared, right? So if I take half of the this coefficient, this middle coefficient, and square it, that will end up giving me a perfect square, all right? Now, so I'm adding that, but I have to, in order for this, you know, in order for this still to be true, I have to add it to both sides. So you can see what I've done is I've uh, taken half of this negative 6 and squared it. Now, this could be negative 6, but when I square it, it's going to be positive. All right. So um, if I take half of 6, right, that gives me 3, a negative 3, and then I square it, I get a positive 9. All right. In either case, so I'm just going to add 9 to both sides. So when I add 9 to both sides, the left-hand side becomes a perfect square, and, and it's equal to a constant, and then I can just unsquare both sides, and I'll get this, um, so I get x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus square root of x. Adding 3 to both sides gives me x is equal to 3 plus or minus the square root of 10. Now this is, again, a shorthand for two solutions, so this means x Oops, this means, sorry, 3 plus the square root of 10 or 3 minus the square root of 10, right? It's just two solutions in one. It's just sort of a shorthand way of writing it. All right, so let's practice that. Let's practice that. We're, gonna, we're, going, we're going to complete the square. So the first step then is to, I'm going to move this constant term to the other side, right? So I'm going to get x squared plus 10x, leave a space, equals, I'm going to um, subtract 4 from both sides, so I end up with a negative 4. All right, and then I need to add something to both sides that makes the left-hand side a perfect square, and I'm going to take half of 10 and square it. Half of 10 is 5, when I square it I get 25. 
but I have to do that to both sides, right? Because I, I don't want I want this equation to still be true. And if I add the same thing, thing to both sides, then it will still be true. So I'm going to add 25 to both sides. That makes the left-hand side a perfect square. So this x squared plus 10x plus 25 is the perfect square of x plus 5, right? And then um, negative 4 plus 25 is 21. All right, now I'm going to unsquare both sides. And I'll get x plus 5 is equal to, and remember, plus or minus square root of 21. All right, because this x plus 5 could be positive or negative, and when I square it, I would get 21, right? So um, now I just got to solve for x. So I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I get minus 5 plus or minus the square root of 21. Just remember that's actually two solutions in one. So it's either negative 5 plus the square root of 21 or negative 5 minus the square root of 21. All right, but that's my solution. That's it. That's, that's it. You could, you could come up with decimal solutions if you wanted to, but this is what I would consider the exact answer. All right, so let's take a look at the, the next one. All right, so I want to move the constant over, so I'm going to add 3 to both sides. Right, so I'm going to get um, 4x squared plus 8x equals, I'll leave a space, equals 3. All right. All right, now I have, I have a, um, have a 4 here. I would rather not have a 4 out front. It's much easier to complete the square if I don't have a 4, but I can actually factor out a 4, right? 4 times x uh, squared plus 2x, and then I'm going to leave a space, and it is equal to 3. So I'm just going to factor out a 4 now. All right, so now I can divide both sides by 4, and I'll end up with x squared plus 2x um, is equal to 3 fourths. Now I can go ahead and complete the square. I'm going to take half of that middle coefficient and square it. So half of 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1, so I'm going to add 1 to both sides. All right, so now this left-hand side is a perfect square. It's the perfect square of x plus 1. And um, I can turn uh, 1 into 4 fourths, right? So four, uh, 3 fourths plus 4 fourths is 7 fourths. Okay, so we got some fractions involved here. Now I can unsquare both sides. All right, so x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 7 over 4. And because I, that I can, that's the same thing as uh, plus or minus the square root of 7 over the square root of 4. And the square root of 4 is 2. So I would probably write this as um, plus or minus, <laughs> I'm running out of room, 7 over 2. All right, that's to make it a little simpler. Now I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides, and I'll end up with x is equal to minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 7 over 2. All right, that's fine if you want to leave it that way. Sometimes um, you could combine this into one term. Uh, by turning the negative 1 into uh, a negative, uh, negative 2 over 2, right? So this is also equal to um, negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 7 all over 2, right? It's the same thing, right? This is everything divided by 2. But you could leave it either. You can express your answer either way. All right, I think I've got a couple of more examples here to go through. Um, so let's take a look at this next one. So again, start out by just moving the constant term over. So we get x squared minus 3x, leave a space, equals 5. Now I want to add something to the left-hand side to make it a perfect square. I'm going to add half of the middle term squared. All right, now it's not an easy, nice, even, even number, so I have to add... Um, I'm going to add uh, negative 3 halves and then square it, right? Um, I'll just write it out, minus 3 halves squared. I have to do it to both sides, right? If I add what, something to one side, I have to add it to the other side in order for the equation to still be 
true. Okay, so um, now this becomes the perfect square of, um, uh, what is it, x, x <laughs> minus 3 halves squared, okay, is equal to, um, I'll write it as 5 plus 9 fourths. All right, now I could turn this into 20 fourths, and that would be equal to 29 fourths. might be a little better. Okay, so now we have to unsquare both sides. I get x minus 3 halves is equal to the square root of 29 fourths, but I'm going to write it as, now remember, plus or minus, <laughs> square root of 29 over the square root of 4, which is 2. All right. So I'm going to I'm going to do that because I know I have to add 3 halves to both sides and it's kind of nice to work with halves. Um and so that's convenient. All right, so x is equal to 3 halves plus or minus the square root of 29 over 2 and now I can combine those if I want. I could leave it this way, that's fine. Um or I could write it as 3 plus or minus the square root of 29 all over 2. All right, one more here. Um, so again, I have a leading coefficient. Now this is in, it's in the um, it's in the form I like it. I got I've got first of all just move that two over, right? So I'm going to get three x squared minus five x. Leave a space equals minus two. All right. I don't like that three though. So <laughs> what I'm going to do is divide. Um, actually, I can just divide both sides by three. Let's do that. So I'm going to divide, let's just divide both, instead of factoring out a, neg, a 3, let's just divide both sides by 3. All right, so that gives me uh, x squared minus 5 thirds x equals minus 2 thirds. All right, it's a little ugly, right? <laughs> but I want to add half of the middle term squared, right? So I'm going to add, um, it's a, it's, negative 5 thirds, so it's going to be negative 5 over 6. And I can leave off the negative because when I know when I square it, um, it's going to be positive. So I, or I could leave the negative in there, it doesn't matter. So, and I'm going to do that to both sides. So I'm going to add a negative 5 over 6 squared. So I'm using 5 over 6 because that is half of 5 thirds, right? Half of 5 thirds is the same as 1 half times 5 thirds, which would be five six okay so now <laughs> now this becomes x minus five six squared all right and then we had to simplify this over thing over here this is kind of ugly all right so um this is going to be 25 over 36 right so I'm going to, I'm going to rewrite this. I want, I'm going to get a 36 in the denominator here. So I'm going to multiply, uh, I'm going to, I want a 36 over here. Um, because this is going to be 25 over 36. So I'm going to turn this two thirds into 36 by multiplying by 12. So I get a minus, uh, minus 24 over 36. That is two thirds. Um, I've just rewrite, rewritten it in, in terms of 36 so that I can combine these and so I get let me just rewrite this um, 5 6 quantity squared is equal to 136 <laughs> all right fractions all right <laughs> so now I unsquare both sides I get x minus 5 6 is equal to um, plus or minus one sixth, right? If I take the square root of one, that's one, take the square root of 36, that's six. All right, so now I need to add five six to both sides so that I get x is equal to five six plus or minus one six. Now, because we don't have a radical, let's just combine that. We could, let's show the two answers. All right, so the two answers are five six plus one six, which is just equal to one. And 5, 6 minus 1, 6 is 4, 6, which is 2 thirds. So my answers are 1 and 2, 1 and then 2 thirds. Those two, those two values should satisfy the original equation. And you can always check it. Go back and put in 1 
you know, into the original equation, you know, three minus five plus two should equal zero, right? <laughs> so, um, so that that's a, you can always check these solutions. Make sure you got the right answer. All right, that's all of the <laughs> examples I've got. So go ahead and work on the practice problems, and I'll meet you for the next video.